behind the webinar is actually, you know, these kind of webinars we do a lot. We call them Premier Wednesday events. Absolutely, anyone can join, mostly from my classes and especially free of cost. And this is more to get some career guidance in terms of what are you going to do next? How can you proceed further? So if there can be any questions at any time, you can stop me uh, because this is there is no a flow or a content that I would like to share. I have a few things to share here. Generally, you know, I don't use slides. So I'm just trying to put some information together here. Right. So let's go. A brief about who we are. Premier Agile has been a small consulting startup uh, where we specialize into consulting, coaching, and training services with some best-in-class trainers across the globe. We cater to the global audience. And Premier Agile is very proud to say thanks to you. We are the only rated 5 out of 5 globally in this um, category. And, and, and nearly 5,000 genuine students rated us. So... So far, we have trained uh, several thousands of people globally and uh, not just India, but also across the global locations, nearly 1,000 or more than that workshops that we conducted. And our classes are pretty interactive, zero PowerPoint, very, very experiential learning, you know, based on certain brain science learning techniques. And we just don't teach software teams to do Scrum. We, we teach pretty much every every domain out there who can do Scrum and be agile. And we also have a specialized service called Premier Accelerate, where we help people with their career-related questions. We do a lot of webinars like this. We help in resume writing. We help in interview preparation. So this is a different category of services that we provide, not to everyone, but only for those who registered in that category. Right. So if you have questions on what is Premier Accelerate, how to register for it, uh, this is not a special registration. This registration comes in a different level when you actually register for the regular CSM, CSPO kind of courses. So you just need to register in a different category called Premier Accelerate. So you can talk to our sales team, you know, maybe next time, whenever you have an opportunity to discuss more about this. And... Most of you know me and I see some new, uh, some of you new learners joined, probably uh, we haven't interacted before. That's me, Suresh Konduru. I'm a certified Scrum trainer with Scrum Alliance, one of the largest non-profit trade organizations for Scrum based out of the United States. And I have about 25 or more years of corporate experience, not just as a trainer, but more into a practitioner more worked with a lot of teams on the ground. So that's pretty much my training experience. But before I was a trainer, I was more of a, you know, practitioner implementing Scrum, developing products, consulting for Fortune 100 customers across the globe. Okay, so, so let's quickly check what is this whole uh, session all about? Why are we here today? You know, we are just trying to figure out where do we go? What do we do after a certified Scrum Master workshop? And you will tell me what you have been doing all these weeks, months, ever since you completed CSM. And of course, you have, if you have questions, anytime you can stop me. And uh, yeah, we'll try to maintain our focus. Very, very important. And we also have a time limit. Our time limit is at 9 p.m. where we will stop the session. But that's the time boxed. So we can go max till then. If you are done, we will wrap up much earlier than that. Right. Okay, so the more uh, purpose why we are doing this session is I would like you to figure out where you are, what you are today and where you want to go. So this is more like a little exploration together that we can do. And then if you have questions, you can always ask, especially after CSM, the Certified Scrum Master by Scrum Alliance. Of course, we all wanted to reach a goal, but how to get there? A CSM will only help you get move towards the goal much closer, but CSM is not the only step that will help you get there, right? So there could be certain intermediate steps that you also need to take after completing your CSM certification, right? 
So quick uh, check before that. Um, maybe you should say quickly right on the chat. Are you a CSM certified? Just say yes or no. My question is, are you a Scrum Alliance CSM certified? Okay, so I see a lot of yes coming out there. So just let me know if anyone is not certified, just say no. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, around nine or 10 of you. Okay. Great. Thank you. So I don't think we have anyone not CSM certified. So, so let's quickly figure out to get to the goal. Is it challenging? I mean, a goal can be anything. Goal can be your career progression, your promotion, your next level jump in your career or, or, or anything in your organization. Anything can be a goal. I mean, that's your, your, your depending on your aspirations, you have a goal. So just let me know if it is challenging to reach the goal after CSM certified. Just say, just just type challenging. That's it. On the chat, type challenging. If you are facing any challenge with your after you have done CSM certification to get to the goal. Okay, great. Wow. We have quite a few responses out there and all of us are no different. We are all together in this. So it's, it's quite challenging to get to the goal. And the goal can be different for different of us, but the challenge is, 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 the, is the only common thing right great so we'll figure out what are your challenges and probably suggest some steps how to get there but you also can detail out about a little bit more about your challenge right so just let us see quickly a few steps on what are possibly that can be taken after the certified scrum master workshop first thing is obviously practicing scrum right now, how do you practice Scrum? It's like, a, again, the chicken rule, right? Without this, this doesn't happen. Without a job, there is no practice and vice versa. So definitely we should practice Scrum, but how and where we'll, we'll look into that. Now, other steps probably that you can take are certain additional learning, which we'll talk about more. And then obviously acquire certain Scrum master skills. Now, by now, you would have figured out that the Scrum Alliance Certified Scrum Master introduces you to what is traditional, what is agile, what is Scrum, what is Scrum framework, who is a Scrum Master, who is a product owner, et cetera, et cetera, details, right? So what are the events? If you remember, we practiced some events, we practiced a sprint, we created product backlog, right? So we did all those. But if you realize, these are all pretty foundational aspects of Scrum, right? Now, that's where you got to go a little bit deeper, start practicing, start acquiring more and more Scrum Master skills, right? Now that practice and acquisition of Scrum Master skills, we could not really do in the CSM class for obvious reasons, right? We have only two days and we have a curriculum to complete. So obviously that was not possible. So there are different avenues that we generally talk about where you can practice and acquire those additional skills. Okay, so let's check some of them. Where do you practice? Now, for some of us, it could be a pretty straightforward answer. You have to practice Scrum with your, with your teams, right? So you have a team uh, which is already doing Scrum and then probably there is a Scrum Master. So you have to tag along with the Scrum Master, work with your team, that is one opportunity. The other opportunity is uh, you have a team, but you are not doing Scrum. 
and then that can be a very very beautiful opportunity for you to start and how do you start so there are certain steps that you got to take so identify the team have a product owner first of all you need to convince people that you need to do scrum so all this is pretty much your responsibility and that is how you get to practice you get to manage conflicts that is how you learn some negotiation aspects right so if there is a team but not doing scrum is like a green field wherein it's your opportunity to implement as much closely as possible but of course it's not going to be that easy because you need to convince people that yes scrum is going to help us because everyone is going to ask a question what is in it for me why should we do scrum maybe there is a practical challenge on the ground say time to market is not very good or uh, the communication collaboration within the team is not so great today or there are so many user related uh, issues right so or quality issues or productivity issues so there can be so many issues out there on the ground because of which scrum can help you so it is your job to find out what is the challenge on the ground and how can scrum help your team and then slowly get started there right that's another uh, place to practice now the other place that i have seen some people doing it and work really well is people started practicing scrum in their personal life i mean this seems very trivial but it actually worked for some people maybe it's worth trying so for example how do you plan a vacation using scrum or how do you use scrum in the kitchen let us say how do you use scrum to get your child's homework done let us say so these are all small applications but there are people who have practiced it so that can give you some good exposure that may not get you a job but at least it it gives you some exposure about how to do scrum the various terminology certain flexible aspects you want to try what kind of experiments you can make how can you succeed you know certain things that it can help you right now interestingly if you remember we have a repository of case studies we have about 100 case studies on how scrum can help us in various domains non software domains right so if you browse through that list there are several applications where people used scrum in their personal life a very very simple example is there is one case study which says how to find a job using scrum so there is a person who was looking for a job and they actually did scrum to find a job so so these are the pretty interesting applications out there uh, seems very trivial very silly but i found it very very useful individually right not at an organization level but individually so navin is here so he can help us with the link to the 100 case studies in a non software context so in case anyone would like to have a refresh now when you can put it on the chat please right now the other option where you have you can practice scrum is you form your own team for example we have about 15 people in this group and you had your 25 30 people in your csm whatsapp groups and you have some friends so form a small team and this help lot of people actually so they don't have an opportunity to do scrum in their workplace so they wanted to develop something new so they formed a small team of say 10 people and they said okay i'll be the scrum master you be the product owner the rest of them will be the developers so we'll figure out something develop something so have an idea use some open source software maybe figure out how you can meet on a say a biweekly basis do sprints so you form your own team and if you need guidance we at premier agile are there to help you to to guide you on how you can do sprints but you need to find the group as of now we have plans to probably do this additional support as well we are trying to figure out our logistics but meanwhile this is something that can help you form a group a small working group or a cohort for yourself you got to travel with this group for the next 3 months of course virtually and then still do scrum Now this is something that can help you immensely, and then you can portray this as your real experience also in your resume, for sure. So maybe you should try. So 
I would like to request if anyone is interested to form a cohort, just say cohort. Just type cohort on the chat. If you're interested to form a small cohort, and we are not going to charge for this. Obviously, this is going to be free of cost. But we are going to facilitate a group of people who can do Scrum in their free time, trying to build something real. Okay, I'm seeing some of you typing cohort. Great. So request others, just, just give a thought to it. If you're interested, this is something we can definitely facilitate. And we will have that small team of people. It can be five, six, seven, whatever it is. That we'll typically form a Scrum team size. And then you start practicing Scrum. But obviously, there has to be a commitment towards this. Because this is not going to be easy. If you want to do a two-week sprint, which means there is a sprint planning on the first day, sprint review and retrospective on the last day. And then there is some engineering work to be done during the sprint. And there needs to be certain tech or, or hands-on experienced people to do the tech work, right? So we need to figure out a team, form our own team like we did in our case study in the CSM class. But this is quite effective so that you can practice. There can be failure, but that's okay. That is how we are going to learn. So you should not be worried about the failure you should think about what are the kind of learnings that I get if I do this, right? Okay, so I request Naveen and anyone else from Premier Agile team, just make sure we make some notes about who is interested in the cohort so that we can reach out and uh, then we can subsequently take it from there. Yeah. Okay, great. Now the logistics, the frequency, how we go about it, et cetera, et cetera, we'll probably figure it out separately. Now this is not the right forum for that, right? Okay, so practicing Scrum, is there anything else that anyone would like to suggest or ask a question before I move forward? Okay. Sure. So let's move on. If there is a question, you can always interrupt me. Now, as I was saying earlier, so the CSM gave you a basic introduction to Scrum, Scrum Master, etc. But there is always a deep dive that one has to learn. And I have given a few examples of certain additional skills that one needs to acquire, right? For example, facilitation skills, coaching skills, conflict management. How do you deal with difficult situations? How do you help resolve a conflict, right? Um, and, and how do you train people, let us say? You know, how do you coach a group? How do you coach one-on-one, -on -one, right? So these are all different skills and there are different streams of uh, study that one can make and practice as well. So this was not something that you did in the CSM class. So you need to figure out ways on how you can get there. Now in this session, uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about facilitation, how to get there, where do you learn, et cetera, et cetera. We'll go a little deeper into that. But this webinar is not focused to acquire those Scrum Master skills, obviously. It's not sufficient. Right? Now, apart from this, obviously, there can be certain other additional learning opportunities. Uh, obviously, uh, next level certifications, like, you know, once you do CSM, a lot of students ask me, okay, what, should, what learning should I pursue next? So a couple of, certifications are there depending on your time, depending upon your budget, et cetera, et cetera. You probably could plan some of those. You know, a certified Scrum product owner is usually the second certification taken lot by a lot of certified Scrum masters because as a Scrum master, you are also coaching a product owner. So you need to learn their job to coach them so that you can ask the right questions. So a CSPO can be a good choice and off late, I, my observation is also that a lot of people go for advanced CSM because it goes deeper dive into these the acquisition of the Scrum Master skills, right? A little bit about the advanced CSM we are going to talk about in some time. But there can be certain other resources like picking up a book, reading a book. Uh, there are certain books I have suggested in the references in the CSM workbook. Hopefully, all of you had a chance to read, the, at least go through the references list. 
there are one or two books that I would suggest immediately that you start reading. Uh, one of them that is already there in the CSM workbook is um, Succeeding with Scrum, sorry, Succeeding with Agile by Mike. Okay, let's let's write it here. So that can be one book. If you are not experienced in Agile or Scrum at all, and just cleared CSM, this can be a very good next second book. I mean, first one was like a Scrum guide. Second one could be this one. Now, this is something you probably have to buy. Uh, the international edition is going to be expensive, but there can be a local edition. Just check it out on Amazon or any other uh, book website. So this can be a very, very good starter. In fact, personally, I read this book and hence I would recommend this. Okay, so so let, let me pause and check. Has anyone read any book after your CSM certification? If you read it, say yes. After your CSM certification, apart from the Scrum Guide, apart from the Premier Agile CSM workbook, is there any other book that you have read? If you read it, say yes. Or maybe give the book name or title also. Some of you, I understand you have completed your CSM pretty recently. So time could be also a constraint. But if there is any other suggestion that anyone has read, then that can be a very, very good idea as well. Okay. So I see some of you saying no and others, since we haven't typed anything, I'm assuming a no. So, so that can be one area where you need to focus on. Just pick up something, develop a habit, reading a book, at least a few pages a day to start with. But you definitely need to read some stuff out there so that that can get you a good start. Okay. Now, after this, uh, apart from reading the books, there can be certain free resources. You know, today, everything is online. You know, you have several millions of resources out there free. You know, Udemy, there are some courses, YouTube courses, Premier Agile, there are 500 blogs and about 50 to 60 videos. So these are all pretty free of cost and they will not consume a lot of time. For example, if you go to our website, Learning Shots, there are about 50 learning shots. Each one is about three minutes. So you, you got to find time to figure out when, how, what you shouldn't watch. For example, I want to see uh, what are the great characteristics or characteristics of a great scrum master. One, two, three, four, five. Five minutes video. That's it. So, so I would recommend you to watch because these videos are made by practitioners uh, who are so experienced and passionate about scrum so this is something that will help you please watch those videos i believe just now naveen had posted something on the chat the learning shots yeah great and that number four is very very crucial again so webinars that what you are attending now could probably get you some information as well and then the conferences which i would have also announced in the class Conferences by Scrum Alliance or by some other body are great opportunities to learn. Of course, webinars are free of cost, but conferences are not. They have certain charges depending on the local, you know, infrastructure that needs to be provided, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if anyone is in Bangalore, there is a conference happening in a couple of weeks away from now, which is on 12th and 13th of July. If anyone is in Hyderabad, there is a conference which is about five months away from now. We are doing a regional scrum gathering in Hyderabad. So these are all pretty good opportunities to interact with people, learn from them, ask questions. In Hyderabad, we are doing a conference with a lot of focus on AI and agility. So even if you are not in Hyderabad, my suggestion or my recommendation is see if you can travel. No, this is not a commercial announcement. 
this is a very very good opportunity for you to learn because conferences are not places where we make money right so these are all not for profit events i'm just saying this again these are not for profit events so you probably should consider attending this i have been traveling for conferences in the last 10 years and these are like pretty good opportunities and in the hyderabad workshop we are also uh, hyderabad conference we are also bringing on certain ai in agile experts where they are going to conduct workshops again free of cost once you register for the conference you can attend all these workshops and the speaker sessions so there will be motivational there will be technical sessions there will be certain you know uh, experiential case studies there will be a wide mix of things right okay so twinkle asks a question when is that scheduled in november it is going to be november uh, 15 16 2024 in hyderabad and uh, naveen can help you with the there you go thank you naveen so he has just given a website name so you can consider registering and for scrum alliance members there is an additional 10 percent discount so i mean see the, uh, just to give a brief about this there are these three brackets of prices um regular yearly bird and a super yearly bird so right now the super yearly bird is on in progress which is about already slashed 40 percent prices and then another 10 percent is what you will get it as a scrum alliance member so if you register it say in the next week or so you're going to get that price after that it is going to increase you can find out in the website itself yep and we are getting some good celebrities also as keynote keynote speakers getting a lot of practitioners to speak conduct workshops and it's going to be pretty helpful and there is a lot of ai focus so so as a scrum master how do i leverage ai and the tools available in the market today to perform my job better how do i facilitate using say the ai tool for example right you're going to learn some of those things these are things which are not available out there yet so the conferences are those places which will introduce, introduce you to the latest trends. So again, personally, my target attend one conference every year. And I've been doing that pretty much. Last month, I was in the United States to attend the global Scrum gathering of Scrum Alliance in New Orleans, US. So, so likewise, I go for a conference every year and get to meet people, make connections, ask questions. You know, it's a pretty good, fun learning events. And webinars, uh, we do a lot of webinars. Premier Agile does webinars. Scrum Alliance conducts a lot of free webinars. So since you're already a Scrum Alliance member, you should go into the, go on to the Scrum Alliance website, register for their webinars. I think there is one happening. I just saw an announcement yesterday uh, on product development. So, what is the difference between product owner, product manager? You know, some of these trivial topics out there, which are in our minds, can be cleared by attending those webinars. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So I'll pause here to see if anyone has any questions so far. Hello. Hello, hey. Suresh. Am I audible? You are audible, yes. Okay. Um, I have a question that uh, apart from project manager role, uh, I lead a support team or look after the support tickets. So how can I do a scrum among them? Sure. So for your support teams, um, your goal is to make sure the support is provided adequately, take care of your severity one, severity two, three tickets, etc., etc. That's Those are your typical goals, right? So based on your goal, you have several tickets. So one thing that you, one starting point that I can suggest is uh, have a product backlog of those tickets, let us say, and then have someone from the customer side, from your team, someone who knows the business about these tickets and what is the impact on the business can prioritize them. So, so basically your starting point can be create a product backlog with the tickets. Identify it. And then if if you are already taking care of people and helping them move forward, resolving the tickets, so probably you are like a scrum master there. 
and then you have your associates or engineers who are fixing the tickets so they can be your developers in that case so developers. find parallels with scrum and then identify those and then see if you can do two weeks or three weeks or depending on the business need and then you can have a cycle frequency for that and then you can invite people to review test your progress on a weekly basis bi-weekly whatever it is so you can still do scrum you for even for support projects but but my suggestion is before that Figure out why do you want to do Scrum? Do you have any real challenges on the ground in support teams? And if you think Scrum can probably resolve them, that's a good starting point for you. So identify the purpose. Begin, okay. or have an end goal. Begin with the end. That's what they call it, right? So begin with the end in mind. Okay. Meaning? But uh, there's no product owner, right? There is a this product case. There is a product owner. There is no product owner. Right. Huh. Scrum master and developer. No, you need to identify your product owner. So okay. otherwise, who will prioritize the work? Someone has to tell you, boss, team, these are the tickets. These are my requests. But this ticket number 100 is more important than ticket number 10. So that prioritization, someone is doing it currently. I'm sure there is someone in the background doing it, whether we are able to identify them clearly or not is the question but there is some prioritization going on by someone in the whole organization that person will be your product owner okay okay got the point thank you i have another question can i ask so anything relevant to this information because we have some more information coming up so we if it is not relevant we can wait and then we can gradually move on and then take your next question yeah okay okay Okay. Okay, great. So what we discussed so far in the last, say, 30 minutes or so when we started the session is all about, okay, we did this. These are some of the next steps. But let us quickly figure out what are the various skills that as a Scrum Master you should acquire. Okay, just a quick glance. I hope all of us can relate, remember some of these texts, some of these responsibilities is yes, these are the scrum master's responsibilities you know you are you are the one who is removing the blockers you are the one who is creating high performing more efficient teams you are coaching them you are coaching the overall team of course you are also coaching the product owner you are a facilitator you are resolving the conflicts etc etc so these are the typical responsibilities of a scrum master and then you know just a quick reminder that we have probably heard discussed before these are the different hats that a scrum master wears at different times you are going to do differently right so it's not like one size that fits all right so you are a facilitator at times at times you are mentoring people mentoring the teams at times you are teaching them or coaching them So I hope you can recollect these things uh, that we have discussed in the class at a very, very quick glance. Coaching is all about a continuous improvement, which you are enabling people, empowering people to make their own decisions. You're trying to reflect a true picture on the ground so that they make better decisions. Mentoring is still you're guiding people, but based on your own experience in the past, right? You are a mentor at times. Sometimes you're teaching people about certain basic stuff, this may not require a lot of time, but at least in the initial times, you may want to teach your teams, your product owners, or other teams, other product owners, teach other managers because they don't know what Scrum is all about, etc. Right. And then finally, facilitation. <laughs> so just a quick uh, little bit elaboration on what is facilitation. A facilitation is all about helping people to make decisions. Right now, it's about trying to not just make some logistics, but also make sure there is a conducive environment for people. There is a group of people who would like to make decisions. For example, there is a sprint retrospective going on and the entire scrum team is there trying to figure out, well, how did we do the sprint and what are we going to do next? How can we make it better next time? Right. So this is a decision that they need to make. 
and that's where a facilitator like you can help right so there are different ideas coming from different people making sure all the ideas are channelized there is an action plan made by end of the retrospective is is what is facilitation right so it is it is a platform where it is about providing a platform where people are able to get together. They don't blame each other, but they constructively challenge each other and still make a decision, which is not going to be easy because you're dealing with a bunch of brilliant minds out there, right? So everyone has a better idea than the other or, or some people are not speaking at all. So you find a lot of challenges in such situations and as a scrum master, you are a facilitator. And these are some of the occasions when you probably have to facilitate the scrum events, product backlog refinement sessions. You probably have to facilitate release planning uh, with product owner and uh, you know other product related decision makers. Or even at a very strategic level, you may also help product owner and maybe a CEO of your company also do a lot of product planning exercises. So as a facilitator, you are not restricted to only your team. You're not restricted only with one or two teams. You are probably going far beyond your call of duty and you are helping a lot more people in the organization than just your team. And that's what is a strategic uh, facilitation exercise you might want to do in product planning, right? Okay, so a quick look at what the responsibilities of a facilitator are. Obviously, you need to design and plan the session so there is a retro going on. There is a refinement that's happening. There is a release planning session going on for the next couple of months. So you got to figure out who are there and who are the audience and what is their profile? What is their interest? So who has more influence? Who has less influence? So look at the participants profile. You got to plan, design and plan for the session. This is before the session. And then during the session, there is a guiding and controlling mechanism. And then obviously there is a scribe responsibility that one has to take. So just a quick glance at facilitators responsibilities during those three steps. Now, as a scrum master, yes, you are accountable to play these responsibilities for all scrum events, especially in the initial stages, you may want to probably have to spend more time on facilitation as the teams mature and you know they are able to make better decisions you probably can reduce your involvement in facilitation with this team probably helping other teams in the organization so that's why that is how you are also making a self managed team and in fact uh, you are also paving the way for people to grow and hence you are focusing on other areas in the organization which means your growth is also possibly on the way right so yes facilitation is something we could not do much in csm class but probably we'll have to find certain other opportunities on where you can learn facilitation and oh yeah so by the way just a quick uh, note here a side note here where you can learn about facilitation is the advanced csm class so the advanced certified scrum master workshop is all about um going deeper dive into facilitation for example you see here these are the facilitation techniques and when you should facilitate when you should not facilitate and then these are the coaching stuff what are the various coaching models what are the coaching techniques so we have practice coaching here so we'll practice facilitation here and there are a lot of other activities that scrum master takes up in sprints, for example, how to help the team to create a definition of time, how to mitigate your developers' challenges, how do you resolve impediments, how do you scale from one team to many teams, right? So facilitation is something that is involved throughout the whole sprint and beyond the scrum team's purview as well. Now, this is where an advanced CSM as a course will help you Practice facilitation, practice coaching, practice teaching, a lot of stuff. So that's what we do in the class. We do a, a lot of practice in this class. So we pick up a case study. By the way, in CSM, we did a case study at the end. So in an advanced CSM, we pick up a case study uh, right on the second day morning. And then we practice that case study throughout, throughout the day. And then we do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions 
I do one coaching session and then you observe, you make notes, then you start practicing coaching in the class itself. So there is lots and lots of facilitation practice and coaching practice that is happening in the advanced CSM class. Right. So just to give you a quick glimpse about that. Okay, so a few more pieces of information here. Benefits of the advanced uh, CSM. Obviously, there is a lot of career growth. You acquire those Scrum Master skills that we were mentioning earlier. And then um, there is a lot of recognition in the organization, outside the organization as well. And then this is something uh, worth mentioning. So Premier Accelerate, where we are trying to do a a practice that I was saying, the cohorts thing, where we wanted to provide a launch pad to, to you guys. And we, we typically take a team, like a scrum team of 10 or lesser, and then start helping you practice sprints, play a scrum master's role there. And then since there can be like six or seven people, you may want to play that role on rotation. We'll see how that goes. But there is a launch pad that we wanted to do, and this can be typically for three months. Right. And again, these are not uh, chargeable stuff. So these are some things which we would like to help our students where you can come on Zoom and practice uh, sprints. And I see some of you are interested to form a cohort. So we will reach out to you special separately to figure out how we can do these things. Yeah. Okay, so that's the launch pad or the cohort thing. And then obviously Scrum Alliance membership, you get access to several thousands of articles, thousands of videos, along with uh, Scrum Alliance and Premier Agile. And uh, you get membership discounts and uh, you get access to free webinars and conferences, et cetera, et cetera. So this is another benefit of being an advanced CSM. And then apart from that, there are these additional resources that I was just talking about. Right. So these are some of the benefits of doing an advanced CSM. Okay, so I'm going to pause here again and check if anyone has questions and even we can even ask Kamrul's, answer Kamrul's question as well. Can people actually go from just CSM to SAFE as in skipping ACSM and then doing SAFE certification? Will that also help uh, in the career growth? So safe, yes, the simple answer is yes. You can skip because there is no specific path because these are Scrum Alliance courses. Safe courses are offered by Scaled Agile Academy, right? So that's a different body altogether. So these are two different sets of courses. Now, what is safe? Safe is all about when you scale from one team to many teams, right? So for example, you are working in an environment where there are 100 people and all 100 people are working towards one product goal. So how do you scale up? So SAFE will tell you, okay, boss, you are doing very well as a team. Now you scale up. That's what SAFE is doing today, right? Now, the question is, do you need it? So you need to figure out. If you have a need, if your customer is asking, you should do it. But if you do not have, say, so many teams and you want to do SAFE, then that can be a little bit challenging. Because first of all, you need to be very strong at a team level and then get into more scale level work, right? So my suggestion is figure out the need. Begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end goal. What do you want to achieve? Okay, career growth. So career growth is definitely uh, something that if the, if the job that you are interviewing is asking for safe, then there is no question. You need to do it. If the job role is asking for, do you know coaching? You want to practice coaching? Then you need to do advanced CSM, let us say, right? Okay. So, so figure out what is that you are looking at? What is the interviewer asking? What is the job description all about, let us say? So if you find a lot of job descriptions like, oh, I want an agile coach, I want a senior scrum master, I want you to be great facilitator, et cetera, et cetera, then advanced CSM will be the best bet. If the job description says, I want you to work in scaled environment, there are about 50 people, 50 to 100 people is what generally uh, it helps, right? If you are working in a two team, three team and set up, then you may not need to get into that level of complexity yet. That will probably be needed 
little bit down the line. So just check where you are getting into. Figure out the need, the why, the purpose. And then Actually, take... most of the job descriptions, they uh, just mentioned that the first level of uh, Scrum certification as in CSM or PSM would do. Preferred skill would be safe. Or sometimes they do mention that it would be a desired skill that if you do the safe as well. Sure. So, so I can understand if PSM one or ACSM. That sure. so PSM, CSM, both are same level. So right. You cannot compare PSM one or ACSM, right? So these are different uh, levels of certification. So there is no comparison. So if you did a CSM before, then naturally you tend to do advanced CSM. Then right. the next level, which is CSP, SM, this is one track. But if your job description is asking for SAFE, a SAFE certification, then you do a SAFE certification. But then how will you get SAFE experience? Sure. Just by attending a certification, you will not get experience, right? Then you need to start practicing SAFE. You need to figure out what are the various forums where I can practice SAFE also. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so, so again, it will boil down back into the practicing aspect. So again, find a team, find a few teams or, or join an organization where you are already safe certified, but you're looking for that kind of an experience, see an organization, which is doing safe, maybe, right? So that is where you or or your organization is moving from waterfall to safe, let us say, and that's a good place to be. You probably will get some experience there on safe, maybe wait get that experience for a few months and then you start thinking about a job or finding a job with safe um, need out there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. But safe, yes, is a very, very recognized certificate today. There is no doubt about that. But just that it is a little more comprehensive. It talks about a lot of practices, a lot of roles, a lot of uh, metrics, of course, a lot of principles. There, there is a huge setup for safe. So there is a lot of learning. For sure, it will be useful. But depending on a need. Because some people said, oh, we did safe, but it's very hard to understand or practice it. So there are different schools of thought. OK, Kamral's question, sir, please. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, which type of professions uh, uh, can I choose after being CS and certified? Sorry, which? Type of professions can I choose after being CSM certifications? Which profession you can choose? Right. Profession in the sense. Is there any specific professions less like scrum master role or product owner? Can so I choose? After doing CSM. After doing CSM or advanced CSM. Yeah. So CSM will is like an entry level scrum master's role. Right. So. Right. If you are experienced, let's say anything between five years or more to 12 years, 15 years kind of experience, right? So right. you can get into a scrum master's profession for sure. And the advanced CSM is more a little bit senior scrum master kind of a profession you can look for. So if you have done a ACSM, then you can look for roles as a senior scrum master. And um, or agile coach kind of a roles. So typically one scrum master is working with say one or two teams, a senior scrum master may be working with say three or four or maybe more teams. And the coach is looking at maybe more than five teams. I'm talking about the industry, what is happening today. It's, this is not like a rule book with different organizations implemented differently. And then as a coach, you also are working with your management, your customers, trying to coach them, trying to implement Scrum at an organization level, right? Because uh, one team is doing Scrum very well, great. Two teams, great. But how will 10 teams do Scrum? So that's where there is a need for coaches. So, so you are looking at something like a coach level if you are able to do the advanced CSM class. Okay, great. Uh... Can I do advanced CSM after the CSM certification or I have to wait for one year experience as a scrum master? Uh, no, you don't need to wait for one year after doing CSM, but you need to be demonstrating scrum master experience. Meaning, say you did CSM last weekend, let us say. 
but you okay. have already certain qualities and responsibilities of a scrum master you have done before for example okay uh i am addressing my team's challenges and risks on a daily basis which is like removing impediments for my team i am not a scrum master but i have done that before right okay. so you are already playing a scrum master's responsibility in one way or the other you don't have a designation called scrum master but you have played the responsibility before now that is good enough for your experience okay then i can put the experience in that yeah. uh, during the applications correct then i can do this course right if i uh, if during... i do the sorry just a second okay. so okay you need to just make sure you go through those lines and start putting your application your application is not very detailed it will just ask you okay. what are your scrum master responsibilities like 1 2 3 4 5 some bullet points you need to write so as long as you are able to demonstrate that that's good enough okay if i complete a advanced csm then my csm will be auto renewed it will be automatically renewed correct for two years next two years for two years yes okay okay so, thanks yeah so one is that is another benefit which i didn't really probably write here but yeah that's an indirect benefit that you are getting that your prior certification is automatically renewed yes okay you have mentioned that um, by doing this webinar today we can get two uh, scrum education units right how can we get this uh, uh, can you uh, tell us in details 20 units yeah yeah for so, two years right right so you'll get two units for today's webinar and um, how to get them you need to add them manually to your dashboard so you log into scrum alliance okay go to your dashboard and it will it will say add seus click that and when you click that you will see what date 19th june who was the facilitator or the speaker suresh konduru what did you learn okay. so you can write these are the things i learned 1 2 3 4 5 so write three four bullet points two hours which means two units and submit so scrum alliance will award you those two units and it will be automatically added in your dashboard so we will send you uh, some help link also okay and which navin has just shared on the chat so you can follow that link for the detailed steps great thank you thank you very much thank you so vaishnavi you want to ask a question yeah hi suresh hey so as like uh, csm do we have expiration for this acsm as well same the same as csm all scrum alliance certifications come with a date uh this is also for 2 years from the date that you complete this so it will be 2 years okay. and then the prior csm is automatically renewed so okay. both of them are valid for 2 years from that date okay got it and one more question and could you please uh, just give the brief on uh, how could be the renewal process for csm as we know one of the major step is to get the 20 sqs apart from that uh, do we need to charge and uh, do we need to do the certification as well along with that can okay. you just brief about that renewal process yeah yeah so there are two two ways say one a and b a is earning units like what you are earning two units today like was earn 20 units and then uh, add those units manually on your dashboard if you are attending scrum alliance conferences or scrum alliance webinars these are automatically added to your account so you need to accumulate 20 units over 2 years and then at the time of renewal you need to pay 100 dollars so that your csm is renewed for another 2 years from that date and that is option a option b is you attend something like advanced csm and then complete the course in 2 days and then you are getting acsm certified so your csm will be automatically renewed you don't need to do anything so you pay for the acsm course and then you are getting both both the certifications valid for 2 years from that date right yeah, got it. so so those are like two ways most of the people go for the option b 
because they found yeah, at a time they found you get the two specifications right. right yeah okay so mike you have a question but just because we are on the acsm thing just allow me a few more minutes so so since there is some discussion going on acsm if at all anyone is interested you know we have acsm on our calendar and then because for people who are joining this webinar we just want to make sure there is a something that you would like to take away from this session so right now there is a good sale i would say going on so for whatever the listed price on our website you can actually register uh, with 40 percent off discount so for those who are in this session you can use a qr code if you want to and uh, maybe i can give you certain steps also so these are the steps this is pretty easy so you go into our uh, Premier Agile website or you scan the code, you are already there. And then you scroll down on your mobile and then you will see schedules. So we have schedules every month almost. And then you select whichever schedule you want to. And then make sure you use this code CSM next in order to get the discount, right? You put the CSM next there and then uh, it will show you the revised or the discounted price. And then you register from there. Um, so there's just one thing. Uh, I saw those uh, courses are actually virtual. Is there any advanced certificate course that, uh, that you're actually hosting somewhere else in Hyderabad or Bangalore? Currently, I love to do that, but it's not happening because uh, it's not sustainable that we can do a physical class so that's why it's not happening in the physical mode yet it might happen in future the last since a year i'm getting similar queries but we are not able to manage this because the hotel you know charge is very high the the hotel banquet that we do charge is very high and uh, we are not able to really sustain that kind of numbers so we don't we have, we have only virtual classes as of now the advanced classes okay okay thank you thank you okay mike you want to ask a question yes suresh uh so suresh i have a question related to the career mm -hmm. uh, so i'm currently working as project consultant with a SaaS company and it's an individual contribution role uh it's not exactly i would say um, you know, entirely project management because it's more related to the implementation of the features uh, into the client's project or the task that we get. So after this CSM certification, I'm just wondering what kind of roles I can probably, uh, you know, try for because I'm looking to try, I'm trying to, you know, change into that role. No. Okay. I'll, I'll answer that question, Mike, if you can give me one moment. Sure. Meanwhile, meanwhile I request uh, everyone else in this class, in this group, in this webinar today to kindly help us get some information about you, meaning about what certifications you hold so far. So, Naveen, if you can kindly put that Google Forms and... Uh, let everyone answer those. So it take it'll take one or two minutes for everyone. Just quickly put your details so that we know you are here in the session, and then uh, we can help you if needed. Certification, uh, hello. Certification means uh, vendor certification. I mean, uh, professional certification or Google, LinkedIn, Coursera, any type of. No, not those. Just wanted to see what kind of Scrum Alliance certifications. Okay. You... Only Scrum Alliance. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can check others oh. also there, but that's something that we don't really 
we cannot help you with those so we don't really okay. know so okay. the link is there on the chat so if you could kindly uh, check if you are able to access the link uh, no suresh he is asking for the permission access permissions asking for permission yeah navin can you check just make it accessible to everyone Uh, I am able to access uh, using some third party email address. Actually, uh, it's asking that uh, only the organ owner's uh, organization will be able to access it, but the others are not able to view it. Okay, I understand. So, yeah, I just posted the message. You posted the message, meaning? Okay, the error message. Okay, got that. Yeah. So, Naveen, can you change the permissions so that everyone can? Uh, answer this quick survey. Just make it accessible to all. Naveen, just say yes if you are doing it, please. Okay, so Naveen just sent me a yes. So he is working on the access. So we'll, um, as soon as it is ready, he is going to just tell us if that it is ready. So let's see what we're we doing here. Okay. So for Mayank's question, you are an IC today in a, in a different technology stream and you wanted to move into more of a scrum master kind of roles. That's what I understood, Mayank. Yes. Okay. So for, for SAP, or the SAP stuff that you are doing or, or any other package implementation, anything for that matter, the, the career path still remains the same. So you try practicing Scrum where you are. I know, I know so doing Scrum in SAP is not so straightforward, very, very challenging, but there are certain case studies out there on the internet, or you can even browse through our repository to figure out uh, if there is any case study on SAP. So whatever you want to do, whichever job you want to try, first thing is they will ask for experience. No doubt, right? Yeah. Your experience matters. So see if you can implement Scrum in wherever you are, in the in the company, in the team, wherever you are. This is one, one thing that you can try. So gradually you get that experience and then you probably switch over to a proper Scrum Master's role. So this is one path. The, the second path is, again, gain some experience in the cohort. Something that you can form a team with the group here or with your own friends, team members, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. See if you can practice Scrum. So because without practice, there is uh, no, you know, nothing that we can do about, right? Yeah. So practice for like a couple of sprints so that you get the exposure. Then you start applying and uh, applying for jobs. I'll tell you one, one, one simple example, a real example, maybe that will help all of us here, right? So there is one of my CSM students. So she was in, um, in, the, in the business process outsourcing area, BPO, right? Okay. So she wanted to be a scrum master. She has joined CSM class. She has read extensively. She, she got a lot of exposure, knowledge, not experience, but knowledge. And then she went back, she started implementing some of these things in wherever, whatever she was doing. And then she was able to crack a Scrum Master's job in a different organization because this BPO company is not doing Scrum. So she was able to crack it in a different organization after a few months. And, and in fact, she was saying, you know, I had two jobs and two offers, so I don't know where to go now. So she joined one of the webinars and she was actually quoting this incident that, yes, the CSM class helped. But there is a lot of practice that one needs to do. She has read extensively, practiced a little bit, and then faced so many interviews. So she was able to do it finally. So it's going to be a lot of efforts for sure. But it is possible. So whether you are an SAP or BPO or Oracle package implementation or anything, or a non-IT world also, you should practice Scrum at some place. Find a forum where you can do it. And then and, and then start applying. Uh, 
Okay, so let's see Naveen's. I think it is still having some issue. So let me let me figure it out. Naveen, just send me the link, please. I'll also look into it. Send me the folder or wherever you are creating this survey. Live okay, so Naveen sent me the link, but I'm not able to access either. Naveen, did you try changing the permissions? So asking email to edit access. Is Anusha there in the in the meeting? Anusha is not here. Okay. Okay, so what we should do now, we need to uh, resolve this. So the best way is, Naveen, are you able to open the survey? Are you able to open? Okay. Just share your screen, Naveen. So I'll have, I'll request everyone to put the answer on the chat. So that is, so that at least we have some responses. Okay, so guys here in this group uh, request you to kindly answer these questions four and five. I know it's a little manual effort from your side. So you need to tell me answers to both the questions. What certification do you hold today? And are you looking for any other certification in near future? So Sumit, you said CSM. So you hold a CSM. So just make it explicit so that it is easy for us to understand. Okay, for Twinkle, easy. Vaishnavi, easy. Thank you. Arif, easy. Thank you for that. Shashank, thank you. Looking for CSPO. Okay, Sumit, thank you for correcting your message. And uh, Vibo, thank you. So we have Shashank, Vibo, Tega, Arif. Kamrul, thank you. Rag. Rag, hope you can hear me. So if you can hear me, kindly let us help us. Tega, thank you so much for that response. There is one star's iPhone. So I don't know who is the star. Uh, wherever you are, hopefully you are shining. And then if you can answer number four and number five, please. Twinkle, I see your question. Uh, do we also have certifications for certified agile coach? Uh, no, meaning yes, but 
it requires you need to pass through two levels. So if you are a CSM already, so in Scrum Alliance, there is a certification called Certified Team Coach. Okay. Certified Enterprise Coach. So it's like this. Yeah. So those are the two certifications on coach. But then you need to complete uh, CSM. Right. ACSM and then CSPSM. Okay. All those three and then to the agile coach. Understood. That's right. So you need to complete those and then you go into the coach certification. Again, for coach certification, there is no classroom training or anything. It is a, it is an experience you need to showcase because you, you be an ACSM, you're already coaching people. You know, you get into a coaching job and then you document certain application and then you submit the application there for the code certification and then it will be reviewed and uh, they will interview you probably they'll ask some questions give some feedback so the application will go you know a few back and forth and then they will finally award you the code certification it's like okay. a program you need to pursue it might take a few months to get there because there is no proper class for that got it thank you Okay, our Star's iPhone. Uh, sorry, I didn't get your name, Star. So if you can kindly type your name or tell us your name, it will be helping us. Akavat. You are my star. The bad cop. I'll come back. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions uh, from anyone? Thank you for all the responses on the chat. Okay, Naveen, you can kindly stop the screen share. So just wanted to share the QR code in case anyone was not able to take it. But but please note, the, the coupon code will not be valid for a long time. It might expire anytime in the next few days. That's right? so because this is something we want to offer only for those people who join today's session. And, and for more help, obviously, you can reach out to our uh, team, premieragile.com, and we'll be able to chat. Shivis, I'm trying to register, but it's showing uh, open code is invalid. Shashank. Shashank is, I mean, I heard two voices. Shashank, is that you who said try to register? Yes, yes, I tried to register, but it's showing uh, invalid people. Did you? Did you try this CSM next? I just tried it. I'll try it again one more time. Yeah, because I, I tried two, three times today and it was working for me. Can anyone else also try, please? Yeah, it's applicable, actually. It's applicable. So Shashank, it's working. Okay, let me retry. Yeah, just tell me what is happening <clears throat> because once you once you scan it, tell me what happened after that, so that we can just see if we can help. You are able to get to the schedule part. Yes, I was able to. Yes. And then when you get to the schedule, you need to select one schedule, any class that is happening, what is that is announced. And then there is a participant information. Below the participant information, there is something called coupon code. You need to put that code and say apply. Click apply. Okay, let me retry one more time. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, thank you.
Okay, so I guess um, that's it from my side. But if anyone has any question uh, that you would like to ask, you can always ask. We can chat for some more time. Okay, Shakavat Star, I can see you now. Sarji, how are you? Doing good, doing good. How is the bad cop doing? Hi. Hey, it's going fine, sir. Doing actually, fine. Uh, today I'm in holiday and out of my home, actually. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, but that's why I was not able to uh, attend from the very beginning time. That's okay. No problem. You can see your little star also there. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, great. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, so let's check maybe last final call. If there are any questions we can answer or or, or we can sign off. And again, we do these webinars. By, by the way, in your WhatsApp groups, we post some mentoring sessions as well. So we are going to call you for a separate session, mentoring session. If you have more questions, you can join those sessions also. Right? So anytime, any number of times, you can always join the session. Just be there, ask a question, get, get it answered and done. Okay, if that's all we have, uh, we don't have any other questions, we can sign off for the day. Thank you everyone for joining. Please keep watching out premieragile.com for any new sessions being announced. You can always register for free. And please check your WhatsApp. If there is a new session, please make sure you join. And uh, thank you so much. And see you next time around. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you, Suresh.